Hi everybody and welcome to the penetration testing methodology video. So what is a penetration testing methodology? Uh, this type of met methodology is a set of procedures or steps that are performed when doing an assessment or engagement. So a, a quick way to think about this is similar to a recipe for a cake. So you want to make sure that you have done all the steps uh, in order or sometimes not in order depending on the type of cake you're making or the type of engagement but you want to make sure that all the steps are accounted for otherwise the end result is not going to be what you're expecting. So why is this type of methodology needed? So it gives a structure to a red teaming uh, assessment like I was saying before. It also provides consistency so it makes sure that all of the tests whether you ran it one month and you ran the same test the next month it was all under the same parameters it followed the same steps, same methodology uh, it, it's very important to have consistency in red team engagements or assessments to allow for anybody coming in after the fact or a high level executive to look at this and see or even auditors for that standpoint to be able to identify whether or not a, a framework has been put in place. So another way to say methodology in this particular case would be a framework. So it avoids missing required components such as the reporting or maybe you're scanning a particular target and you didn't scan UDP as an example. So that would be an issue of missing data. So that's failing the reconnaissance phase which we'll go over in a second. So it, 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 it allows you to not miss required components which is very key. So a method, the methodology that I'm showing you here is, is one that's proven and tested uh, that I've used over the years. There are a thousand different ways to use different methodologies. Some uh, are very similar, some are very different, but in a general sense it will cover all of these aspects at some point throughout the test. Now we're going to go into each one of these and there will be a module for each one of these steps that will go into much more detail. So. In the first particular case, we're going to start with scope identification, moving down to reconnaissance to gather some more information. Then we're going to exploit the target. So now we've got access to the machine. We're going to do some post-exploitation uh, fun stuff. So stuff like moving up to administrator or root. And second to last is covering your steps. This may or may not be required depending on the engagement that you're looking at. And then the final step is reporting, which should always be there. <clears throat> So, scope identification. So, what is scope? So, this will be going over in a, in a separate module, but scope in a nutshell is being able to understand the wide variety of options that could go into place with an engagement. So, stuff like um, goal identification, so knowing what the end goal happens to be. Do you need to notify anybody that the test is about to occur? Are there any stability or service considerations that have to be took into place, such as a service being, let's say we have a Java service that is specifically finicky about receiving a lot of traffic. That would be something you'd want to take into consideration in the scope identification phase. So this is more of the paperwork side of things. Uh, so it, it's still very important. There needs to be a paper trail around your assessments. So think of this as a cover your ass type situation. Um, this is your get out of jail free card if you're a freelancer or a consultant. The next step is the reconnaissance phase. So what is reconnaissance? Reconnaissance has two particular things. It's, it's an active or a passive check. So this is where you either on the active side you are actually touching the target, looking at information, running scans, performing enumeration, uh, which is just information gathering. Uh, or you're being passive about it, you're using Google, you're using third-party tools to actually touch the organization. So this will all go into more detail, but this is the first core concept of running a test of any engagement is identifying the information that you need and all the information available, whether it's small or large, because you never know what you're going to need or what's going to let you actually get through. So the fun stuff, the exploitation phase. So what is exploitation? We're actually attacking the host. We're gaining access of some kind. We're validating our findings that we found in the reconnaissance phase. Um, again, exploiting the target. And then we're ensuring the stability of the exploits as well. So there will be more on a few videos on this on how to make sure an exploit is not unstable for the machine. Uh, there's also, based on the scope identification phase you should know what services you're attacking or can attack that will have a better effect 
on the stability of the system. So the post-exploitation, so this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. So post-exploitation in a nutshell is around the task of gaining full access to the machine. So starting from a low level user access to full admin or root access. So this is considered privilege escalation. In this particular phase, you wanna get your persistence on the machine. So make sure you don't have to re-exploit a service that may have crashed. Um, you want to be able to be able to get onto the box again quickly without any issues. So again, moving laterally is part of this as well, where you might gain access to one host, but let's say you're from the you're you're attacking from the internet's perspective. Now you have a foothold in the network. So moving laterally laterally for you is moving to different uh, machines, being able to scan from there, and then looking for some good fun stuff such as password hashes, uh, going through emails that might be left on the system, who's logged in, key logging it. There's a lot of varieties um, of things that can be done here. Covering your tracks. So this module, when you get there, will be going over why you cover your tracks and if it is required. So this depends on the engagement. Sometimes you're wanting to have the logs there so that reporting tools can catch what you're doing. However, sometimes clearing them will alert that somebody's there. So depending on the engagement or assessment, you may want to change this up. So we'll go over where log files are in each different type of OS, where their locations are, what they are, uh, whether or not you should wipe the logs. We'll go into different, a few different ways of hiding your persistence, so whether that's through a rootkit or whether that's through um, hiding it just with the uh, OS level um, calls. So we'll go over that in its own module. And then cleaning up. So in a lot of times engagements, you'll need to clean up after yourselves, whether that's um, you've changed a password, a configuration, etc. It's important that you go and clean up depending on the, the engagement so you don't leave a foothold for somebody else. So reporting is the last uh, section of the methodology, but it's also one of the most important, similar to scope identification. So you'll, under, you'll need to understand why we do reporting, the audience that you're reporting to, whether that's executives or uh, another red teamer. So you'll also want to know how to build a report, and we'll have a, a full uh, video series on how to build the report, how it's supposed to look, how to report for different audiences. And it's also important for the feedback loop. So you've done the test, you need to get the report to somebody who can actually perform actionable things on it, such as building detections, patching systems, etc. You're also going to be able to prioritize business risk based on the findings. So in some cases in this organization, uh, remote code execution may be more prevalent in one but not in the other depending on where the system was found. So we'll go, all, like I said, all of this is going to be in more detail and each step of the methodology is going to have its own module.